JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook uh, webinar for the week the July the 13th until Ju July the 17th. I am Harald Ambos Pissoros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we have a very busy week ahead of us with three central banks deciding on monetary policy, the Bank of Japan, the Bank of Canada, and the ECB. Uh, we also get several uh, data from the UK, but GBP traders may stay focused on Brexit as a new round of talks is uh, set to begin. Uh, we, get, we also get New Zealand's CPI, Australia's employment uh, report, and China's uh, GDP for the second quarter. So on Monday today, uh, Monday is the week's uh, only light day with uh, no major events or economic releases scheduled on uh, the economic agenda. On Tuesday, during the Asian morning, Australia's NAB business survey for June is coming out, but no forecast is currently available. Although this is not a major market mover, given the RBA's emphasis on the labor market, we will pay attention to the labor costs index, which in May showed that wages slid 0.9% quarter over quarter after falling 2.7% in April. Further improvement combined with a decent uh, with a decent employment report on Thursday may, may allow RBA policymakers to continue sitting comfortably on the sidelines. Now, during the early European morning, we get the UK's monthly GDP as well as the industrial and manufacturing production rates all for the month of May. No forecast is currently available for the GDP, but the industrial and manufacturing production rates are expected to have returned within the positive territory. Specifically, IP is expected to have rebounded 6% month over month after sliding 20.3% in April, while uh, MP is anticipated to have rebounded 8% uh, month over month after tumbling 24.3%. This would drive both the year-over-year -year rates up to minus uh, 20% and minus 23.9% from minus 24.4% and minus 28.5% respectively. The case for improving industrial and manufacturing production is supported by the UK manufacturing PMI for the month, with which uh, rose to 40.7 from 32.6. Now, although the week includes more UK data with the CPIs on Wednesday and the employment report on Thursday, GBP traders may keep their gaze locked on Brexit with uh, the next round of negotiations scheduled to take place in uh, Brussels this week. The pound gained decently last week after UK Chancellor uh, Rishi Sunak announced uh, uh, three, uh, £30 billion pounds worth of additional fiscal stimulus but another round of uh, talks without any real progress on the relationship between the EU and the UK after the transition period, which expires on December, may put a lead on the currency's uh, latest recovery. From Sweden, we have the inflation numbers for June. Both the headline CPI and CPIF rates are expected to have risen to 0.5% year over year from 0%, but as it is always the case, we prefer to pay more attention to the core CPIF metric, which excludes the volatile items of energy. That rate uh, rose to 1.2% year-over-year in May from 1% in April. At its latest gathering, the Riksbank decided to extend its framework, its framework for its asset purchases from uh, 300 billion SEC to 500 billion up to the end of June 2021, while it announced that in September 
it will start purchasing corporate bonds. The board also decided to cut interest rates and extend maturities on lending to banks, despite keeping the repo rate unchanged at uh, 0%. With all this in mind, we don't expect a potential acceleration in the nation's inflation to alter the bank's plans for providing support to the economic recovery. Germany's final CPI for June Germany's final CPIs for June are also due to be released, but as always, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The nation's uh, ZDW survey for uh, July and Eurozone's industrial production for May are also coming out. With regards to the ZDW survey, the current conditions index is expected to have risen to minus 65 from minus 83.1. While uh, the economic sentiment uh, index is anticipated to have slid to 60 from 63.4, Eurozone's industrial production is, fo is forecast to have rebounded 14.5% uh, month over month after tumbling 17.1%. Later in the day, we have the US CPIs for June. The headline rate is expected to have risen to uh, plus 0.6% year over year from plus 0.1%, but the core one is anticipated to have ticked down to 1.1% from 1.2%. Now, on Wednesday, two central banks decide on their respective monetary policy. During the Asian morning, we have uh, the Bank of uh, Japan, while later in the day, it's the turn of the Bank of Canada. Kicking off with the Bank of Japan, last time, Japanese officials maintained short-term interest rates at minus 0.1%, and the target of the 10-year government bond yields at around 0%, as was widely expected, noting that the economy will likely improve as the fallout from the pandemic subsides. That said, they noted that they are likely to increase the size of money pumped out via market operations and lending facilities to combat the virus from the current 75 trillion yen to 110 trillion. Policymakers are not expected to proceed with any changes to their main to their main policy tools this time either, but it would be interesting to see whether they will expand further some of their emergency lending programs. In any case, we doubt that the yen will react massively to this decision. We expect the safe haven currencies to the safe haven currency to stay mostly linked to headlines and developments surrounding the broader market sentiment and especially anything surrounding the coronavirus. Now, passing the ball to the Bank of Canada, at its most recent meeting, it kept interest rates unchanged and said that given the improvement in short-term funding conditions, it reduced the frequency of its term rep operations and its program to purchase bankers' acceptances. Officials also said that the Canadian economy appears to have avoided the most severe scenario presented in the bank's April monetary policy report and that the economy is expected to resume to growth in the third quarter. That said, despite last week's better than expected employment report, inflation remains very low with the headline rate at minus 0.4% year over year. Therefore, with the bank also publishing its updated economic projections this time, it would be interesting to see what officials' plans are moving forward, even if they are not expected to act uh, this time around. Now, with regards to the data, the UK CPIs and the US industrial production, both for June, are, uh, are also coming out. Both the headline and core UK CPI, uh, CPI rates are expected to have remained unchanged at 0.5% year over year and 1.2%, while the US industrial production is forecast to have accelerated to 4.4% month over month from 1.4%. Now, on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the ECB. At its latest meeting, this bank decided to increase its pandemic emergency purchase program by 600 billion euros to a total of 1,350 billion, extending the horizon of the purchases to at least the end of June 2021. Officials also repeated that they remain ready to adjust all of their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards their aim in a sustained manner. Now, with the headline CPI rate at 0.1% year over year, the core one at 0.9%, and the composite PMI still pointing to contraction, although coming in better than expected, the door for further easing remains wide open. However, with officials expanding their stimulative efforts just at the prior meeting, we don't expect any new action at this gathering. 
we believe that they may prefer to wait and see how uh, and whether their latest uh, decision is affecting the broader economic recovery. That said, we expect President Lagarde to urge EU governments to take action as soon as possible, especially after failing to find common ground on a 750 billion euros rescue fund. Investors may decide not to shake the boat after this meeting, as they may prefer to focus on a special EU summit scheduled for Friday and Saturday, where leaders will discuss once again the rescue plan. If they indeed find common ground, the euro is likely to get benefited. The opposite may be true if they once again fail to agree. Now, as for uh, Thursday's data, during the Asian morning, New Zealand's CPI for uh, the second quarter is coming out. The forecast uh, suggests that inflation slowed to 0.4% quarter over quarter from 0.8%, something that will drive the year over year rate down to 2.1% from 2.5%. At its most uh, recent gathering, the RBNZ decided to keep interest rates uh, and its uh, large-scale asset purchase program unchanged, with officials noting that their nation has contained the spread of the virus, enabling an earlier reception of economic activity than assumed in May. However, they highlighted that uh, the appreciation of uh, their local currency has placed further pressure on exports and that the balance of economic risks remains to the downside adding that they remain willing to ease their policy further if uh, deemed necessary. Now, despite expectations over a slowdown, the year-over-year -year CPI rate is expected to stay near the midpoint of the RBNZ's 1-3% to target range, and also well above the bank's own forecast for the quarter, which is at 1.3%. This may allow RBNZ policymakers to stand pat for another meeting, but with the QE slightly higher against the dollar than it was uh, uh, the last time uh, they met, we also expect them to reiterate concerns of it, over its appreciation, as well as their readiness to ease uh, monetary policy further if needed. Australia's employment report for June is also coming out. Their employment rate is expected to have ticked down to 7% from 7.1%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 100,000 jobs, less than the 227.7 thousand loss in May. That said, the participation rate is expected to have increased to 63.7% from 62.9%, which combined with a slide in the unemployment rate suggests that uh, the people who have uh, joined the lab or force may have actually found a job. This means that the employment change may come in positive this time around. Thus, we would consider the risks as tilted to the upside. As we already noted, and this employment report may allow the RBA to avoid scaling back up its QE purchases, although we expect them to stay willing to do so if things fall out of orbit. The risk uh, to that view is expanding QE purchases in light of the newly adopted lockdown measures in Melbourne. However, we believe that policymakers may prefer to wait for data to reveal whether this had a serious economic impact or not. From China, we have the GDP for the second quarter, alongside the fixed asset investment, industrial production, and retail sales all for June. Chinese economic activity is expected to have rebounded 9.6% quarter over quarter after contracting 9.8% in the first quarter, while fixed asset investment, industrial production, and retail sales are all expected to have improved in June. Following the containment of uh, the coronavirus in China and during the second quarter, this will not come as a surprise to us and perhaps neither to any other market participant. We believe that investors will be more eager to find out how the world's uh, second largest economy has been performing in the third quarter after the second outbreak of the virus. Thus, we don't expect this set of data to prove determinant with regards to the broader market uh, direction. Now, during the early European morning, we get the UK employment report for May. The unemployment rate is expected to have risen to 4.3% from 3.9%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 83,000 jobs in the three months to May, after gaining 6,000 in the three months to April. Average weekly earnings, including bonuses, are expected to have declined 0.3% year over year after increasing 1% while the excluding bonuses rate is forecast to have declined to 0.7% year-over-year from 1.7%.
the case for declining wages is also supported by the KPMG and REC UK report on jobs, where it was mentioned that weak, uh, weak demand uh, for staff had driven down pay for the month. With the headline inflation rate, uh, with the headline inflation rate falling to 0.5% year over year, a 0.7% wage growth would would result in a slowdown in real wages to 0.2% year over year from 0.9%. Later during the U.S. session, we have the U.S. retail sales for uh, June. Expectations are for both the headline and core sales to have slowed to 5% month over month from 17.7 and 12.4% respectively. Now, finally, on Friday, during the European morning, we have Eurozone's uh, final CPIs for June, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their preliminary prints. Later, the US building permits and housing starts for June, as well as the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for July are coming out. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Uh, are there any questions? So no questions for today. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next Monday. If you are interested in uh, more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.